Most of the time when I do these commentaries, I mean, I have a thought in my head and I just riff because that's what I've been trained to do. However, sometimes I do take notes. Sometimes I take notes and I don't even refer to them. Sometimes, I, you know, stuff happens, you know. Uh, but I was thinking of this, uh, I'm, I'm obsessed with this thing called through line, you know, things, how they develop. Because, like, usually when something happens, you know, dips and valleys, whatever, when something happens, you know, you're going along, you're going up thing there, then you slip down, maybe have a little bumps there, you go all the way down, you climb back up, and something happens. But now, if they're talking, if they're talking to you at this point, you're going to say one thing. If they're talking to you at this point, you're going to say another thing. If they talk to you at this point, you're going to say another thing. You might be over here and, says, and, and say something like, oh, I know what causes. What causes was this here or even this here. But you may not have a memory that there was a bridge and this same thing happened over here. You're, you're, you're analyzing it here, but now you don't have the information from over here, which is to say it's, it's, it's a pattern that repeats itself, you see? And this re with this repeating pattern, if you go back and you check it, you know, because, hey, we love the internet, don't we? The age of internet, we have everything. Well, we have, what am I doing? Here we go, hey, just a second. Ah, oh, yeah, is that uh, Robos and Blueberry? Baby, what is this? Is that blueberry, blackberry? What is it? Raspberry? What is it? You don't know. No, uh, black currant, baby. Black currant. Okay, black currant. And I also have my moringa, my moringa tea bag in here too. I've gotta have moringa. Anyway, so let hey, did you get that? I have. Just a second. I have a conspiracy theory. It goes back to the late 40s, you know, when, 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 that, when the FDR guy, he was going, and then the Truman, who just replaced him before that because we didn't get the other guy that, that was supposed to be really good, you know, that would be, you know, anyway, stuff happens, okay? Now, when, when Truman came in, you know, Country Hick, okay, you know, yeah, Country Hick, Country Hick comes in. And then you got these sophisticated Dulles boys whispering in his ear, communism, communism, communism. Not saying that we can make a lot of money off of communism, communism, communism. So naturally, uh, Truman goes for the Okado, he even knows the other stuff, you know, like desegregating the army. But we don't get into all that stuff. The point is, so Truman does a lot of this and a lot of that. Either way, you know, you have the Democrats, Republicans doing it, but everybody's whispering in his ear, and he does what he does. Right then, Eisenhower goes, and so that's, that's, the, that's the start of communism. Then there's the communist scare. That's when the early 40s, the early, rather early 50s, you had the, the, in the mid 50s, you had the McCarthy era and all that stuff. That's what they're talking about then. Okay? Um, so with this communist scare, that becomes the boogeyman the enemy. Okay, now we, 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 we mobilize against this enemy. Now, what's really interesting because that communist thing lasted for a long time, as far as my lifetime is concerned, right? And it went right through the 50s, right on up to the 90s. But let's go back. That's communism. That's the boogeyman for, for the whole, all of America boogeyman, right? Let's go back to something else. Let's go back to what was happening in the late 50s. Late 50s now, right? In all the urban areas, you know, you still had gangs, you, you had local gangs. You know, we had gangs from, from the 20s, 30s, 40s. You always had little gangs, you know, protecting your turf, you know, you're building your, your neighborhood. I'm going to go into the thing. Okay. Now, the police are looking at this stuff and they say, you know, it's getting awfully political happening here. They, we got the communists and the communists happening there. But, you know, the communists influence a lot of stuff that's happened. We got to blame something the, the, the upheaval, not on our racism and what we did, all our redlining, all what we did against them. Blame, we're not going to blame them for that. We're not going to blame the, uh, uh, you know, black, you know, we're not going to blame ourselves for that. We're going to blame the communists for that, right? And plus, they all up here with the white people and black people are getting together and they're forging, again, like they did right before the Civil War when they was coming together, white people, black people, that we, we need to assert this racism and more the communism or something like that to make sure they divide again. You know, and the law and our laws that we put in place are not concretized yet. Okay, I'm gonna get into all this stuff. The point is, it said we gotta break up these gangs. How do we break them up? Hey, let's flood the community with drugs. You know, we're talking about heroin. Okay, now let me tell you something about um, New York City. I grew up in the South Bronx. The South Bronx, in fact, there's an area they call it now, but we didn't, we just called it the Third Avenue when we because. 
Anyway, we went up to Third Avenue, right? It's it's a hub. Now, what the, what the hub means? All this means that major traffic lanes can come in and out of the South Bronx without you even noticing it, because that's what that's where Robert Moses built the the darn thing, right? But also, the same hub was happening down the Lower East Side. You can come in from a different angles, and you'll get in and out of the the area real quick. You know, it's like a continuous. It's a hub, right? Well, they put the, they put the, they put the heroin in in, in in the South Bronx and a bunch of other places or the, the, the Lower East Side or whatever happened uh, to you know break up the gangs, make sure there was no the gangs wouldn't become political political. They wouldn't be listening to Malcolm X. You know what I mean? I guess in this day and age, you know, you, if you consider the hip hop gangs or whatever it is, and everybody listening to Farrakhan, I guess that's they're afraid of that that kind of thing. So they're afraid. So, so they're afraid that they make them politicize and they do stuff, political stuff. So they know that the heroin will will dis disperse that. So it was a weird era between, let's say, the late 50s and the early 70s, or I would say the late 70s, that basically you you could be a drug addict, talk about heroin kind of drug addict, or you become political, or you become educated, because our whole generation before that, everybody's got to get your education, 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 don't know how to value your money. And so, so the people that grew up in the 50s and 60s, that's what they kept on hearing, so they naturally went to school in the, in the, the late 60s into the 70s, right? And so we're there, we're going along just fine. Then all of a sudden, now here's, here's what put me on this trail, okay? And here's where your baby boomers could be of value. I being a baby boomer, I'm sorry, outlier baby, baby boomer, okay? And I, and I I went to the school, okay, this university. I, I, well, I went to Bronx Community College, got kicked out of there because we took over the school, you know, and demanding, you know, like uh, black black instructors and black, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, doesn't matter. I went to the Air Force, came back up there. Now, now, I went to Livingston College. So Livingston was interesting. It was such a good college that, uh, that while I was there, they were actually dismantling it. They, they, was, they, were, they was dismantling the college. They would they say, no, this is not working, because it was an experimental college. It was part of the Rutgers University system. And they would dismantle it. And it, it didn't make any sense to me. The thing was working so good. It was a, the, the races were coming together, all kinds of strife of political people. We all, it was an amazing experience. Not only that, I had different, not just races, we get races, look this race. The, the cast, the cast people, I don't know if you can see my son here, the castes were coming together, right? The political people were coming together. All of this little college was an incredible experiment. But they destroyed it, and I was wondering why. Because remember, these are the people they went they went into the ghetto. You, remember when, when they put the drugs in and, and whatever have you, and you destroyed it, and people just, they went into the ghetto to recruit people to, to come to college, right? So consequently, because of a bunch of other things, and, and for, I, I don't know that kind of history, but consequently, what happened was the fact when we get when I get to the states, I want to interview somebody that might know this. What, what happened with Livingston? But what happens is that when you recruit these people from all over, then you get a different kind of educated kind of person. You know what I mean? A different kind of middle class person because you're influenced by a whole bunch of bunch of different things. And so I'm looking. I'm going like, wow, this is interesting. This is, you know, and then these people also would go on to other higher degrees and other kinds of areas. But that, as soon as they, they killed Livingston College, we, we even had a funeral for it. For it, it was an amazing event. Some other time, talk about that. But anyway, so so what happens? Remember, this is the mid '70s. They, '70s, they, 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 they're killing these colleges. They, they're kicking black people out of college. But I'm trying to say, a few are coming in, but they're kicking. Am I not? You know, they're not going to the pool halls to, to recruit people for college material. That kind of thing. So what happens in the 80s? What happens with the 80s? Damn, we know what happens. Crack hits, right? 70s and 80s, 70s and 80s start happening in the 70s. Actually, late 70s. And what happens? You have you have hip hop, you have crack, you have AIDS, all emerging at the same time, right? Then, so now what we have here, when you had the crack cocaine, what happens is at, at the end of the 80s, we do well. They knew the writing was on the wall. The com, the Soviet Union, the it was going to fall. There was not going to be no more United uh, Socialist uh, Republic or whatever. Um, Socialist so Soviet Republic, whatever it was called, USSR. You know, the first community radio program that was ever done between the USSR and the United States, I was assistant engineer on. Just a little fun fact, though you might want to know. Um, transit letter, whatever you call it. Okay, then what happens is the communism starts to wane. There's no boogeyman whatever have you. So what happens is black people become placeholders. We're, we're the placeholders, the placeholding enemy. 
there's no cocaine, so now you have to demonize a black man. That's where you get all the. And this started in the late '80s. Remember, with Biden and his stuff with the late '80s, with his whatever his speeches on the, on, on the floor. And then into the '90s, you had this. Then you had Bill Clinton come, and then you had uh, Biden again. Still, it still emerges because you know he's had the original crime bill or whatever have you. Da da da. So in a way, think of it this way. In a way, Biden creates the a Clinton s atmosphere. The Clinton. Uh, 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 rarely, well, the, the Clintons, the, the, the Bush, the Bush, the Bushes are on a whole nother traje trajectory. We're, we're, we're victims the whole time. They're on a whole nother trajectory. And then, in fact, and then, then what happens is Clintons, the Clintons, uh, create Obama. When I say create Obama, you know, you see what happens. The, the whole cabin, everything like that comes from the Obama era, right? And then now, and then of course, you know, then, then Hillary, you know, loses because, of course, she loses, and. We have Donald in there, which is continuation of the Bushy, the Bushes jumps, right? But now we have they have have Biden trying to bring Biden back. So what's happening is you have uh, Biden creates Clinton, Clinton creates Obama, Obama creates Biden again, and then Biden tries to take advantage of. But that's it. wow, this is my conspiracy. Theory. It's a man. Hey, people are, was sitting around planning this stuff. To, to people with with scientists, you know, the, the, the cauldrons and, the, and the, the, the steam was coming out of the, 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 the beakers and stuff like that, you know? Then we come to now. All the wealth is out the system. Uh, the, all the damage is done. We, the black men are locked up. Women ain't got no black men. Women are starting to da da da. The, the, I'm not. Remember, I didn't. I didn't use the women's live movement. I didn't get. To, uh, all these kind of forces come together. But now the black man is not obsolete. So you need a new boogeyman. What's the new boogeyman? Here we go. Here we go. 2000. You know what it is? Terrorism. It's a good thing. Because terrorism is a name like communism, but then the terrorists have a face like black people. You know what I mean? Like you know, you see what I'm saying? You see? So they have a perfect book. They have a perfect enemy now. They have an enemy that's faceless but has a face, has an has faces but has an identity. <laughs> Something you can throw money at, right? To, because the people have the fear. Because you 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 control all of the media. The fears the people. But things are changing. Hey, there might not be hey, conspiracy theories. Oh, so that's my conspiracy theory. Okay, so you dissolve Okay, there. okay, back. Right here, conspiracy. Get away, conspiracy theory. So, what's our reality? If you don't want to have a conspiracy, you have to have a reality. So here we go. AOS in the reality. AOS in the house. AOS in the reality. Can I become a AOS in the reality? Doesn't hit, doesn't hit right. Eighty-one thousand hits right. We're just kind of virtual move, but the face, the, the, the face is is internet face. You know what I mean? We don't have to go to marches or whatever. We just got to go to little meetings, two or three people, ask the right question without being hostile or ever having. We have perfect manners. Da da da. Keep on asking questions for months and months and months and months. It's a glorious thing. What can be conspiracies? Ados can be conspiracies. What can what can change this system? Remember, the system has to be changed. Right? It's a system; it has to be changed. You know, um, what can change the system? And the U.S. seeking their reparations because reparations means that they, the, the, the mistreatment of black people have to. Or, I'm sorry, the mistreatment of American descendants of chattel slavery has to stop. You call it in the chits, so the, the, the mistreatment has to stop. Then you got to treat the mistreatment. Where's that? The, those and that stuff is coming from all the stuff that you did. You didn't, you know, hoarded and did your thing. You see what I'm saying? And the U.S. in the house. That's just a message from me. T from the Patterson's taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect from ADAS of the ADOS, American descendants of chattel slavery.